Hello there and welcome back to War Thunder. Today I want to present you the VS-8 Shell 1 in a ship review. This German rank 2 battle rating 3.0 hydrofoil is the first premium testbed for mines in War Thunder. So you can be sure that it will talk about this excessively as well, as well as giving an in-depth review of the ship itself, its drawbacks, its advantages and um, also the tactical use of it. Now, mines are one of those weapons that I did not actually expect to appear in War Thunder the first time that I saw um, ships appear like two years ago. And I think that is a great bonus for the diversity in War Thunder. However, with diversity, there is always coming a certain amount of problems. How to actually engage those problems, how to use the ship to its biggest and uh, most advantages is actually explained in the gameplay is actually explained then later on in the review and um, before i let you loose on the five minute guide that is presented today by drakinifel link to his channel in the video description i want to talk about here the unit test drive before i think it's a great thing that gaijin gives us access to a premium ship in a test drive by only letting us play the game for a very reasonable amount of time. You could get access in a limited time frame to the ship by playing seven games or rather winning seven games with a battle activity of 50%. And I think many of you actually did this by default because you only had to play ships. There was no limitation on the battle rating or the rank or the ship class actually. So many of you didn't really notice uh, or didn't get the news about the ship and uh, saw this in their hangar appear and many of you did not know what to do with it and um, so i was actually also quite interested in how this thing plays out and i do not understand the criticism that a lot of the uh, people in the forums or in the comment sections of certain videos made when they said no, thank you, this is useless and um, I would be okay if it would be completely for free. This is a test ship and it saw already many changes to the mechanics. And I think um, you keep all the silver lines and RP that you earn with this ship, um, even if the test drive expires. So I do not understand the criticism. In this case, Gaijin made something nearly for free. And uh, I think that is really good and uh, deserves a thumbs up. So let's talk about the ship from now on. And, um, you know, all about the ship, all about the mines, all about the hydrofoil principle. And uh, yeah, let's get into it with a five minute guide. The VS-8 was a bit of a special boat. As will be pretty evident from what's on screen, it's a hydrofoil. But a hydrofoil from World War II. Most people associate hydrofoils with significantly more modern vessels of the American and Russian navies from the heart of the Cold War, but their actual history goes back a lot further. A hydrofoil operates in a similar manner to the wing of an aircraft, generating lift by causing differential pressure above and below the wing's surface. Since water is much denser than air, a comparatively short wing can lift a lot more weight at lower speeds than are needed for aircraft. By mounting these wings on spars, or outriggers, under a boat, you can lift the entire hull out of the water. This in turn massively decreases drag, which means you can go a lot faster for the same power. Of course, you still have to propel yourself, which usually leads to either a podded engine or very long propeller shafts extending down and out of the hull. Contrary to their very modern appearance, the first hydrofoils were actually developed at the start of the 20th century, about the same time that aircraft themselves were being developed, with various wonderful and weird looking contraptions happily sailing over lakes and rivers in various test runs. And ironically, by 1919 they had already pretty much hit the upper limits with a top speed of around 60 knots, above which cavitation sets in and starts to tear the foils apart. During the Second World War, Germany started experimenting with hydrofoils to see if they could offer improvements to the existing S-boat fleet. This started with the relatively small VS-6, a 17-ton mine layer capable of 47 knots. It was faster, could carry a larger payload, and could travel over some minefields when compared to a similar conventional boat. 
but it was also incredibly loud, whilst S-boats were very stealthy at lower speeds, and was also much more vulnerable to damage, as whilst a few machine gun rounds to the hull of a regular S-boat was annoying, those same rounds hitting the foil of a hydrofoil could cause the whole thing to come apart in rather spectacular fashion. What happened to VS-1 through VS-5, I hear you ask? Well, the first three exploded, the fourth, fourth vanished without a trace to fight a war a thousand years ago, and... oh, hang on a minute, that's the wrong universe. Honestly, I have no idea why they started at VS-6, but maybe someone can tell us in the comments. In any case, this was followed by VS-7, which was eight knots faster by using a different foil system, but this turned out to be much less stable and also quite hard to turn. This then brings us to VS-8 and its sister VS-9. This was designed to be a much larger craft at 150 feet long and 80 tons displacement, launched in 1943 with the intent to carry entire tanks and other supplies over to Rommel in the Mediterranean. Partially in response to the success the Allies had scored in sinking normal transport ships, the faster hydrofoil would be almost immune to mines and submarine torpedoes and would offer aircraft a much harder target that wouldn't be around to attack for so long. Although designed for a top speed of 45 knots, it was actually limited to about 37 knots as the only engine they could find for it was an 1800 horsepower Mercedes-Benz diesel that was significantly less powerful than was ideal for a ship of this size. To carry the tank, a special self-powered pontoon rested in the carrying deck at the back of the ship, which meant the ship's entire superstructure and power plant was at the forward part of the ship, along with the four 15mm machine guns that formed a notional defensive armament. Although originally ordered in 1940 under an army contract, the ship would not commission until 1943 under control of the Kriegsmarine. Unfortunately, with its limited power plant, although it was quite stable, it was never properly used in its intended role, and thoughts turned to equipping it with between 15 and 20 mines as a fast mine layer instead of a tank carrier. The ship would unfortunately have a relatively short operational career, as it would suffer total engine failure in September 1944, possibly as a result of sabotage, it would beach itself in order to avoid sinking, but would be broken in two during salvage operations. The sister ship VS-9 would never be completed. A follow-on, the mid-sized VS-10, was designed as a full-on torpedo boat from the start, and as a result was much more heavily armed, and significantly faster at the maximum hydrofoil speed of about 60 knots. Unfortunately, this was destroyed completely in an air raid before it could be launched. In War Thunder, the VS-8 shell 1 has no armor whatsoever, so it is rather fragile. Also, the low hit points of the segments amplify this problem. Now, previously, the bridge actually could keep the ship alive for a bit longer because there was enough crew in there to actually count as the ship being operational. However, this has been removed. Furthermore, the overall fragility of the ammo racks that are in the front of the ship and the middle of the ship are very sensitive right now and they can just blow up uh, with a few hits. Furthermore, a big drawback are the hydrofoil principle. As you can see here, potentially they reach down and so the draft is actually pretty deep. So if you lose speed in a shallow region, you're stuck for good. You cannot get out of that anymore. So there are currently five hydrofoils in the game and all of them share the same problem. Furthermore, if somebody is shooting at you with armor piercing and high explosive mixture from a 20mm um, or 37mm, very often they punch holes in the actual underwater line with the high explosive shells and the armor piercing will hit the engines, the ship will slow down and then you have actually um, your sitting duck and you're also flooding because then the holes are underwater. The firing arcs of the turrets are pretty strange, to be honest, and they have at best um, the chance to bring three of the four turrets to bear to the left of the ship, to the front only the front turret, while, while the left one is actually firing in the air, 
and to the right only the right and the front turret fire, while the back turret might have the firing arc, it doesn't fire. The same goes to the rear where there is a massive blind spot where none of the turrets is firing, at least uh, in close quarters. Only at four, 500 meters you then can efficiently engage enemies that are to your rear if you are at speed, so you are actually leaping a little bit out of the water. So then we come to the mines. You have 16 of those EMC naval contact mines and they are strong enough to sink every ship in the game with a single hit. They act like a bit like torpedoes in the, in the amount of damage that they deal. However, currently they have a timer of four minutes and um, I want to talk you through now the gameplay, the tactics, the ideas and the problems. Furthermore, the speed of the ship is quite impressive with 76 km per hour, but this is still 20 km per hour less than the Tech 3 counterpart, the VS-8. Also, while the engines are just strong enough to use the hydrofoil effect to get it up to speed, it feels very weak, it feels very slow and also the combination of the not great the top speed and the big size of the ship makes it still relatively easy to hit at medium to close range. Furthermore, the ship is having such weak engines that even with minor speed corrections and also in turns it loses massive amounts of speed. Now let's finally talk about the mines and we have 16 of those EMC naval contact mines and they have overall a weight of 916 kilograms with a TNT equivalent explosive mass of 435 kilograms and that is enough to actually one shot anything that comes its way. Currently you can lay the mines in a, in a straight line or multiple lines, you can uh, lay them um, single drops and so you can actually make them appear random or in a certain pattern a kind of a net where then the enemy will get caught. Um, currently you cannot adjust the depth only this option is given to you in the test drive so they are always visible on the surface and you actually can destroy them with gunfire to just you know disable them and furthermore if you in the future could um, actually adjust the depth there is always this trade-off if they are too deep then PT boats will be able to go over them without actually triggering them and um, yeah even into deeper water as stated in one of the depth blocks you could be able to destroy them if you see them and that's the thing where in the tactical thinking if an allied is actually playing with you and goes through a narrow channel or interesting area in kind of a suicide run but deploys a smoke and you follow shortly you can then lay the the main mines in the smoke and actually be able to get out of there again without getting killed and actually deploying the entire minefield that you intend to do so. It is not an offensive but a defensive weapon. You can also lay them in a mine, uh, uh, you can also lay a minefield in a capture zone that you just captured and when you want to go to the other capture point to support the fight there then um, leaving behind some nice round surprises for the enemy is very nice in securing this cap or keeping it protected for at least a while because very often it happens you go out of the cap you go around the corner you want to begin the fight about the other cap and then somebody sneaks behind you and captures the point and that is really annoying so i think mines are not an overpowered weapon yet they fit the gameplay in theory very well because a lot of the people are just in their gun sights are tunnel visioning are firing to the side not observing the front and they don't accept uh, don't expect it and um, i think also the hitting symbol should be different in the way that it is clear that you just didn't get explode randomly but it was actually a mine so this would be a further good change Overall, mines are interesting, I love the concept, but the map design with the very close fighting uh, engagements where there is hardly any chance to um, go to interesting places, I think um, this has to be changed for mines to really be a viable option. Currently, it was very frustrating 
playing directly for it. A lot of the kills that I actually got with mines were more by luck than judgment. It is a very situational weapon. The gameplay overall where the main focus lies on gunboats rather than PT boats or mine layers. Um, the map design, the map layout, the battle time and the timer on the mines that self-destruct after 4 minutes give you an just so few narrow chances, a uh, very narrow time window as well, that um, I think it is a weapon that has potential but it should be further worked on and the map design, not just for mines but also for so many other ships, has to change. So while mines are a very frustrating and very situational weapon, especially if you want to actually go for it, it is all the more satisfying to see it work. Now my tactical thinking here is, okay, I wait a certain amount of time here behind this rock in cover and the area just in front of me, just those few meters are highly trafficked when the enemy team tries to go in here. So usually a lot of torpedoes are in the water, a lot of gunfire is there and I know this is a suicide run or I expect it. I smoke up and um, you can see immediately fire is coming in. I just managed to deploy a handful of mines. Um, okay. It was a bit more than this, it was uh, over half of them, um, but it's just this short streak and then I got killed and um, I expect this guy to go into it. I choose here the AFD3 to follow up to watch the views and uh, let's see how it works. And just when I spawn in, there we go. And that is really, really satisfying. Now, I think with another ship in the current meta, I could get much more kills. And um, yes, I played it for getting footage, but also the experience, how it is going directly for them to have the pure few on them. There you can see how slow the AFD3 is, especially when not fully upgraded. Um, and I'm just waiting here. Now B got decaptured, so somebody actually managed to go in there. And this is why you should uh, deploy the mines just a few meters in front of the cap uh, in an ideal world. However, um, it always takes to it always takes a while to actually go into um, the capture zone and then actually decapping it. That just fake takes a few seconds. And um, so if you are directly exploding on the edge of the capture zone due to a mine kill, then you will not flip the cap or, you know, disable it. And that was a double kill. That was a double kill. So let's have a look into the replay and let's see how this looked from a bird's eye view. So this is not a bird's eye view. And here you can see um, how I approach the edge of the cap and how I begin my mine laying process and you barely can see the rear of the ship that's the advantage of the combination of smoke and size i'm immediately set on fire but it was the short streak that was good enough now ideally you need support you need um, just a bit breathing space because there is a bit of delay in the um, time where you can drop the mines like um, one second one and a half seconds and so to make the um, mine belt as dense as possible so that something like the Russian MPK does not slip through that is then actually um, you know mandatory for a successful as I said a diagonal line brings the success and there we have it that was the first kill and I was really really happy already about this but I expected more to happen so let's have a look and let's make a little bit of a cut and then we can see that you actually don't see here the mines in the replay and out of all the ships it is another vs8 that actually goes into the spawn and tastes the mines and that was actually a double kill because there was another ship in there this buddy although got killed before he could get into it before we come to my most successful mine deployment so far, I actually wanted to show you this hilarious scene that uh, just um, shows you the game mechanics, how they work. So I'm here fighting over the middle cap and I try my very best 
to destroy here the enemies I get shot up from the front and it's not really looking that great um, the 15 millimeters sometimes they have a very good burst damage sometimes they are disappointing the lower battle rating the enemy ship is the better and yes I did not see here the G5 to my uh, right and um, I was more concentrating on the front where the fire was coming from my bridge was damaged and um, yeah I had no control over my steering and um, yeah there is the G5 I expect him to drop torps let's kill him come on and I lay here a mine I lay here a mine <laughs> and let's just let's just pause this let me explain what happened so I was about to get torpedoed by a misplaying but I deployed here a mine. While I killed the aggressor, the G5, his torpedo still hit me, but my explosion actually triggered my mines, killing the MPK-163 that just came around the corner. So that is actually showing the splash damage potential of those mines. So what you now see is actually kind of the dream, what you really really want to see this is my most successful uh, mining run and while i was kind of frustrated in the games um you know before that this one just showed that it is absolutely worth it and i need you to watch this to actually believe it um this is the dream i think this is literally one in a hundred games where it worked like this um, where the enemy team, well, every, where the stars basically aligned themselves for me to have here a very good mining run. Um, but you can also see what actually had to happen for me to have success. I came around the corner, one of my teammates actually distracted the enemy. A lot of the enemies are also distracted in the fight before that. I kill an LS uh, with gunfire. Now I begin to smoke up and another LS is actually smoking me up the enemy LS because he robs his teammates of clear vision while I'm on fire I also slow down in the turn allowing me to deploy a very tight minefield and so come on come on yeah one of the mines got actually destroyed after it got deployed team killing is not possible you cannot kill yourself with mines and uh, so yeah i'm kind of dead in the water one of my engines is destroyed and i just extinguished the fire the smoke is actually clearing again and i deployed the mines on the edge of the capture zone and now i got hit so the bridge was the last segment that was kind of not completely destroyed now i'm you know spawning again in the afd3 funnily enough while i'm hardcore grinding i actually use lineups just because why not um so here i wait patiently for the mine kills to actually come in and you could see this spawn um, not the spawn the capture zone that um, i just mined is still in our hands so yeah there is a big interest uh within the enemy team to capture it you know it's the closest spawn and um, there is still some gunfire going on there is still some smoke and then one of the freakiest moments ever happened i fire blindly into the smoke with you know an artillery shell one shell and then this happened double kill double kill already on two rather big ships a triple kill another big ship got hit and come on come on come on come on yes quadruple kill that was the most amazing thing ever with mines and while i did not actually um, protect my cap in such a way that it survived um, i think killing four ships that actually were going for a cap especially because there were rather big patrol boats with 40 millimeters or with armor um, i think i actually gave my team here a big advantage in the fight around a a quadruple kill i was so happy after that i was really smiling the entire day when this happened mines are that situational i think if i would have gone for active torpedo kills you know choosing a target and firing uh, in the same amount of time and games that it took me i would have gotten more kills i would have gotten more kills i would have been able to 
play better, you know, firing into a certain direction, torpedo patterns, reloading them, and, um, you know, gunfighting. So that was actually the VS-8. That is the review on it. It's highly situational. But if you like to play like this, if you love those moments of, you know, awesomeness, then this is the ship to go to. And um, I hope for improvements to the overall meta, to the map design, for allowing more tactical mind laying with actual, you know, going more often into the situations. In 70, 80% of the cases, I was actually uh, destroyed before I could go into the uh, interesting areas overall i think the meta has to change a little bit we need larger pt boat areas we need more tactical options for mines torpedoes and other things than only gunfire ships and furthermore i think uh, that the battle time overall should increase where there is a lot of action going on and less focus on planes in particular that's it for me today Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope you enjoyed this video, give it a like, share it with your friends, try it out yourself if you didn't already and um, let me know how um, you think about this, what your experiences are and we'll see each other on the battlefields, in the skies and on the waves of War Thunder.